Howdy all, welcome back for part three, the box method. Here is the exact same as from method number two and method number three, so we know what answer we should be getting. The box method is probably the most alien method that you're going to have. And here is the setup for the box method. When you get, and the reason, well, first off, the reason why. The reason why I love this. This is my favorite. This is, if I had to choose one, I would choose method three, the box method, 100% of the time. Except for if it's a monomial, if it's just like three times that, I just distribute it and be done with it. As soon as I get something like this, I'm using a box. The reason? Organization. And that's it. Organization. It organizes everything super nice and super easy. Especially if you get a trinomial times a trinomial or something even larger than that. The box method works for every single way. It is still doing. So it is still, in this case, a double distribution. And I'll be honest, when I grew up, when I was doing my math classes last century, I learned this method and this method alone. I didn't learn this method until I went to college. Surprisingly, I never, they never showed it to me. And I saw this and I thought that was the greatest thing ever. But now, I didn't learn this box method until about two years ago. Two or th well, actually about three or four years ago. But here's how you set it up. And once you get used to the setup, it's very easy. You take a look at the first, the first factor, because we have two factors here. Factor times factor equals a product. There are two terms. Here, there are three terms. And when you set it up, you'll just say, oh, two and three. So what you want to make, you're going to make a two-row by three column well, there's an N in there I guess box a rectangle it's a rectangle so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the rectangle there are my three columns and there are my two rows now what I'll do is I'll take the 2x plus 3 the 2x is gonna go in the first row and the plus 3 is in the second row. Just like the, the distribution properties that we used in the other times. It's going to be 2x times all of that and 3 times all of that. Well, I'm going to take the three terms here. I'm going to put an x squared there. I'm going to pl put a plus 3x there and a minus 2 there. So I have the top part is the trinomial. There's the binomial. Could we have flipped it and made and put that on top and that on the bottom? Absolutely. Remember the rule. A times B is equal to B times A. So you could have made it in a different way. I don't know if that would have been as helpful, but hey. If you like that, go right ahead. Now, here's the thing. Inside the box, you multiply the row value times the column value for that box. So this is going to be 2x times x squared, which is 2x cubed. Now my row is 2x still times 3x. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is x squared. Now, 2x times negative 2, that's negative 4x. So we did a, the distributive property, which you can see it here, 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4. 2x cubed plus 6x minus 4x. Or, yeah, minus 4x. So we got that distribution property down. 3 we're going to get a positive 3x squared. And yes, I like to put the positives there. This is going to help us later on when we use this to factor. Positive 3x times positive, th positive 3 times positive 3x is a positive 9x. Like I said, keep the positive or negative signs there because that will tell you exactly what you have. Make sure you write neat too. I've seen some of your handwriting. Write neater. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. Now, one of the special things is if you wrote this in standard form, which you did, x over constant, or x in constant because it, 
everything should be in decreasing order of power. And then we have decreasing order of power here, so we have our constant here. Something special happens. The diagonals of the box are like terms. So the diagonals are like terms. So, is there a like term for 2x cubed? No, so I'm going to just say 2x cubed. I have 3x plus 6x. 3x squared plus 6x squared, that's a 9x squared. 9 minus 4, that's a plus 5x. And then I have a negative 6. Now I'm done. And this box can be generated for anything. It can be generated for a binomial times a binomial. If you have x plus 4 times x minus 3, you would create a box that's 2 by 2. x plus 4, x minus 3, get x squared, then you get a negative 3x, then you get a positive 4x, then you get a negative 12. And so our answer to this would be x squared, but look at the diagonal. That's Those are uh, like terms. 4 minus 3 is 1, so it's plus x minus 12. Now, just really quickly, I don't want to take too much more time. Multiply the numbers here. What do you get? 1 times negative 12 is what? Negative 12. So this diagonal, the product is negative 12. What's 4 times 3? This diagonal is 4 times 3. This one was 1 times negative 12. 4 times th negative 3 is negative 12. This is a really cool idea that the product of this diagonal is equal to the product of this diagonal. And this is what's going to help us factor later on. And I'm going to factor everything out of here. So that's just kind of a preview of coming attractions. We can use this to multiply to find the answer. But when we know this, we can still use the box to find out what these two things are, those two binomials are. So like I said, preview of coming attractions. I think you're going to like it. It's going to take a lot of guesswork out of factoring because factoring is a lot of guesswork unless you have a method for doing it. And we do have a method for doing it. So if you have any questions, ask in class. Make sure you're doing your work. And uh, yeah, just keep on fighting through it. Persevere. That's what you want to do. Key to algebra, remember, is discipline and perseverance. Don't stop until you get it right. Don't stop until you get the answer and then make sure the answer is right. Have a great day, everyone. See you in the next class.